103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We are recording this on Sunday morning, July 25th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Daughter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. This episode is brought to you by Crunch Munch. Crunch Munch, the delicious munch for your crunch. <laughs> Do you want a crunch? Do you want a munch? Then get a box of Crunch Munch at a local Crunch Munch supplier near you. Uh, the advertisers uh, represented in this show, not necessarily those. <laughs> share our beliefs or share our lack of belief. That's right. <laughs> other, our, other cereals are available. Yeah. Other guests today are the John Richards. Hello, John. Hello. All the way from England. Uh, George Brown from uh Athens, Tennessee, and uh, the Wombat, I mean, I'm hey. sorry, the Doubtfire, sorry, uh, again, also from England, is that right, uh, Doubtfire? No, I'm I'm in uh, Pensacola, Florida right now. Oh, Florida, Florida, okay, yeah. I don't know why I was thinking that. Anyway, uh, the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. Wombat, what's on our plate today? Hey, I wanted to do some listener feedback from the last month. Uh, Thank you guys so much for commenting on the show. But before we get into it, I want to go over a quick little super fast. No one's even going to recognize this happening. It's going to be light speed, super fast. No one's going to realize summary of everyone's lives in the next two minutes. Okay, John Richard, go, 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 go. Life story, what do you got? You can see my house behind me here. No, that's a lie. <laughs> Looks like a castle. <laughs> Would you want to live in a castle, John? Is that that's is that the goal? That's the Duke of Norfolk's pad. Yeah. No, no, no. My life, I've I've been getting increasingly live streamed. I've been all over the place. I've been uh, sure have. Yeah, I've been on Atheism UK live stream. I've been on um, my own Free Thought Hour live stream. I've been on. Um, Harris, the Harris Sultan live stream, and now I'm on this great live stream. And guess what? I've got another one in a minute. <laughs> what? You got another one? And what? How many? Well, it's a, it's a, just a meeting in a minute. So, well, I don't want to rock the boat, but you had told us this last week that there was rumors on the horizon of a presidency in your future. Like, how is that turning out? Are, are we on yeah, yeah. the rails for that? Are you getting the castle set up for it? Is your crown in the, in the, in the mailbox? What, what's going well, on? It, it, it's I am the president elect of okay. Atheism UK, but you don't tell anybody yet. <laughs> okay. I, I'm still the vice president until August the seventh. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. That's nice. You current. just told millions of our listeners. Though. Yeah, I know millions and millions of people. Well, he's gambling that you know Americans don't count. That's how it works. Uh, okay. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, congratulations. That sounds like real a real, real big fun time. Yeah. Speaking of which, what was he, some of your uh, responsibilities compared to where you're at right now as vice president? Well, yeah, I have to, I have to give lead now. And uh, progress the direction and the size and the uh, effect of the organization. So you're bringing the muffins now to the, the you corporate. You could put it like that, yes. Yeah, we, nice. prefer, well, we prefer crumpets. In this country, crumpets, you know? crumpets, crumpets, crumpets. <laughs> there we go. Crumpets and biscuits. All right. <laughs> Scott Williams, all the way in Florida. It's been good to see you again. How have you been? And thanks again for all the help with the music. I dropped some draft tracks of a music thing that I've been working on. I finally am at the point where I'm ready to start laying down vocals. So this show is going to be really good for getting my pitch up because sometimes I go so long without speaking, but now I have to like get the chops up. Scott, got questions for you. When you're making music, do you got vocals in mind already or do they just come naturally as part of the process? Like how much of the idea of the song is, is available to you at the very start? For me, it, it's all about the track at first. So I'm, it's all about the music and the track and the arrangement. Um, and then if I feel like the track lends itself to a vocal, like 
maybe oh. it sounds like oh i could hear a vocal on this song so then i'll go back and rearrange it or get with a vocalist who can come with some ideas and put it down and say oh I know how to arrange this song now we need to put this part there and this part mm. there and then we yeah. can kind of so it's all a creative process through the whole thing you know it really is i love that part i love when you can hear the thing that needs to be in the song that's not there and then it's just a question of how can i construct it so that what's in my head is now what everybody else hears i love that let me ask you a question talk to me when you make a track when you mm. make a track do you start with the drums or do you start with the melody drums first for me i'm a drums first guy like i hear everything else once i put the joke <laughs> why is that everybody i, I ask that question they answer the same way yeah, and i'm the same know. way what is I that i don't hear the melody until the drums comes out like i might have an right. idea but once i lay down the drums it's like well, oh here's yeah but it's, it also yeah. sets the beat for the entire track i mean for yeah. the entire song sets like, the mood. Mm -hmm. yeah, sets everything. The mood. Mm -hmm. yeah speaking of which it like, drives uh, it you play guitar how have you been have you had a chance to like now like uh enjoy some of the uh finer outdoors and indoors hobbies that you may not have had now that covid is hopefully not as bad in tennessee i mean it's still bad let me let me rephrase well, I, I've have you had a chance to get more time with your hobbies <laughs> oh, yeah a little I, I did a, a couple of Baskin Atheist tables this week, hmm. and it's been very slow because I go out in the middle of the afternoon and people are working. Yeah, it's COVID also really hot right now, stuff. too. And it's really hot. It's really uh, hot. I got two people come by and talk to me. It came by and talked to me, and both of them were atheists. So uh, you know, it was nice to be able to tell them about the Atheist Society of Knoxville and uh, let them know they're not alone. So that's a big mm. deal. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, I haven't had the bike out all week. Hardly picked up my guitar. But, um, you know, I do play my games and I get on Facebook and, you know, same old, same old pretty much. Not bad, not bad. I will tell you this. Um, I've been playing some disc golf and I've had opportunities to talk to a lot of different guys. We had a tournament again yesterday. I got second place on my card, but it was all terrible scores. None of the scores oh, were good. Bro, I think good. I was like 10 over par. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no one in our group was good, yeah, I did. <laughs> but I got second place. So I'll take yeah, it. I did get a new iPhone though. Oh, good, good, cool, yeah, cool. I, I'm up to 12, the 12. Now, nice 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 yeah. i was saying like some of the guys that i'm talking to clearly have christian backgrounds like they'll have crosses drawn on their discs mm -hmm. but it is nice to be able to choose when to engage in those kinds of conversations or not because it's nice just to be out with people first For so sure. i'm gonna yeah. enjoy that ahead of time before i start you know tackling the and what is your beliefs and why do you believe them i i just want to enjoy just being outside with peeps right george, george brown your latency is looking so good recently. What's been going on with you? Well, um, I've been engaged in a couple of pursuits. You know, one of them is I have d dipped my toe in the waters of telehealth medicine. Okay. And uh, it, it, it's, it's a very interesting landscape out there. Um, there are a number of competing services. I call them platforms. These are these are competing companies that offer the complete package of telehealth medicine. And um, so one of them has given me a link to a service which tests my internet connection better than the other services. And the name of this service is speedof.me. Okay, speedof is one word and me is just M-E. And um, it, it tells you not only your throughput speed, but also your latency. And that was what was killing my quality on this show yeah. for weeks. I it didn't mind the George the Brown present PowerPoint presentation every day i didn't mind that i didn't mind it i was coming to enjoy it it was becoming like a special little charming moment of talking to you slowly well uh all i had to do to fix this was to reboot the router nice, nice. just to to, re, to pull it up pull it out of its power in other words take the plug out of the wall socket wait about a half a minute half a minute and then put the plug back in and like magic here i am synchronized well, we're glad to have you at full speed. How about yeah. how about we full speed go into some listener comments and questions that we've been having sure, last sure. month? How's that for a transition, guys? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to uh, 
I don't know if I should share my screen or not, or if I should just do them based off of how we've had them. So we'll probably do a mix of both. But first thing first, we got a lot of comments that are fun. And I love the fun comments. We got eight comments from the last week's show. We typically get about eight or 10. And uh, from last week's episode, which was, geez, no, it was all about, hey, double standards are annoying. Not only dangerous, but annoying. Um, we got some funny ones from a KM who says, ah, your notifications triggered me. I must be arguing with strangers on the internet. Too much. <laughs> Too much mentions of double standards are causing people to be freaking out. Also, uh, Jay Hoy says, uh, he, she, she mentioned specifically a point in the conversation where we were talking about prime ministers not giving real answers. She says, much like prime minister questions aren't called, prime minister answers i don't understand quite what that meant but i totally understand the idea that answers can oftentimes just be questions from political people like they they tend not to give straightforward answers right yeah no and answer with questions yeah yeah we get those too i'm glad it's not just us um here's another one this is silly it's it's a silly one it's not a mean one it's directed at our own john richards i've got a stand. oh i'm gonna say this in a british accent i've got a standard don't answer your freaking phone while on the podcast. So gutted to be a Brit right now. Sorry, world. An apology on your behalf. Yeah. And then, of course, <laughs> yeah, move on. All right. And then the last one is a bunch of ones from uh, Dada's Trading Room, who's been a frequent replier and commenter for the show. Uh, first one he asked a while back ago is, um, what, isn't it a waste of time to discuss whether or not to worship imaginary beings? And let me just make sure I'm getting this question right. We'll throw it to Larry first. Isn't it a waste of time to discuss about whether or not wor to worship imaginary beings? Like, no, isn't it a waste of time? Larry, what do you Not think? a waste of time to discuss it. Obviously, we have this, uh, this show that discusses it. Um, but the thing about it is religion does real harm in the world and has for thousands of years. Uh, if we don't talk about it and just ignore it, it will just go on unchecked and we can't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's cost us too dearly as societies uh, going down through the ages and we, we need to bring some fresh air to it. We need to bring some fresh air to it. I like it. John Richards, what's the value of talking about uh, whether or not we should worship imaginary beings? Exactly what Larry says. In fact, every week I do a, a, a report, a review of the harm, mostly the harm, that religion has done around the world. It's called Global Atheist News. And there is so much harm, mostly in countries like, let me name some of the bad boys. There's Pakistan, there's uh, Iraq, there's Nigeria, there's mm. Israel, there's Afghanistan. Nigeria is the double whammy because it's like very Christian and very Islamic. Both, yeah. both of them right next to each other and fighting with each other. It's crazy. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, so if you look at Global Atheist News, you'll see why we talk about, you know, defending atheism, as, as a lot of people like to call it, uh, e even though we haven't got a God to, you know, to worship. It's preventing the, the damage that's being caused by worshippers of a God. And mm. a recent example comes from Israel, where one of the big rabbis, big chief rabbi, was, he was pronouncing that we shouldn't do education because they've got a new government in Israel. No education and, whatsever, or just for not women. <laughs> like how how bad is it? What's the yeah yeah? What's the well, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? Because he, of course, is boasting that he went to school and never got a certificate at all. Wow. <laughs> and that's that's something for him to be proud of, apparently. I am but, terrified by the anti-intellectual yeah. leg mm -hmm. of. Christian right or religious groups because they don't want to foster critical thinking, but at the same time, they want to foster stagnation in education. Yes. And I yes. find that incredibly, one, dangerous, and two, popular for people who don't want to put in the work to ask themselves questions or learn new things because it is a struggle. It is an it's easy a clue, isn't it? When It's a clue, isn't it, when religious leaders love mm. ignorance. Yeah, they love dumb people. <laughs> George, what do you got? Throw it in. But the truth will set you free. 
<laughs> to a large extent, it will. To be honest with you, knowing the truth to an extent, but also knowing how to find the truth. That's that's the map. That's the real. Yeah, the, the main thing I came away from college with was an ability to research because that's what they make you do from freshman on. You know, they yep. give you uh, tasks and you have to go research it and come back, right. write papers, think about it. Right. And uh, once you get through college, it, that's a skill that you hopefully will exercise for the rest of your life. Exactly. What I love about my job is we often get new instruments brought into our laboratory. I don't know what this instrument is, but I can tell you if you give me like two days, I can tell you everything about it if I can research it. Like I can take the time to learn well enough to operate something and teach other people how to do the same thing too. And that's the that's what I think will set people free. The ability to think critically and find good answers from bad ones. Scott, I'm gonna throw this up at you. Is it a waste of time to talk about whether or not we should worship about imaginary beings? No, I think it's a good um, exploration uh, and it's a good way for people to reflect. It gives people an opportunity to reflect on something they may not even uh, think about. Um, I, and, and of course, I agree with what everybody's saying here. It's, it's kind of obvious and even I think a lot of religious people have told me the same thing that you know, religion has been anti-science and, you know, it can be taken to an extreme. And and here's the problem. I think here's the challenge mm. is that there's this thing in psychology uh, called magical thinking. And magical thinking isn't something you necessarily pick up from your parents or learn from society. Magical thinking, they said, even happens with children. As they come to a certain age, they start this magical thinking without any sort of prompting or believe it or not. So the thing is that this sort of thinking is kind of ingrained in humans. And a lot of researchers of mind and, you know, especially on the topic of religion and things of that nature, spirituality, um, this sort of stuff emerges from that part of our brain that is just magical thinking and it says that it's normal actually normal for people to have magical thinking but on the other hand i know that people can train themselves out of that and sort of approach the world with more skepticism and more reasonableness and it profits us to do that it does so the challenge i guess is trying to get people to see a value and to, to do that in the first place. If this is a feeling that's ingrained in us, and I, and I mean, I think we all have experienced, you know, magical thinking or, or we're religious at one point or whatever the case may be. So it takes a special, I think, a character and training and just the willingness to, 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 to go out on a ledge and challenge yourself in that regard. Yeah. So Scott, uh, can you give us an example or maybe define what magical thinking is and your, what, how you're using it? Yeah. So magical thinking, uh, for example, is when a child clings to an invisible friend to talk to or a blanket for security. Somehow the blanket provides this supernatural um, protection. And so and this kind of an, stuff starts there. And as an adult? As an adult, it could be, you know, the belief in God, the belief or in a miracles. higher power. Uh, I or think miracles. More miracles. Yeah. Like they can't explain something, so it's got to be God. It's got to hmm. be a, a miracle. It's yep. a, a lot of it springs from uh, argument from ignorance. Uh, you know, they don't have an answer, so therefore it has to be whatever they fill in the blank with. And, mm -hmm. uh, it seems to be more and more of that these days. Yeah. It's like a need to know. It's like people, people feel like they're going through life in a, with a blind spot. If they admit they don't know the answer to certain questions, right. they when feel in like fact, I think it's the opposite. Mm. They're thinking mm. they know is the blind spot. That's it. Oh, that's so good. Let's get the t-shirt factory ready to go. Cause that is a good mm -hmm. one, Scott. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, John, you had posted some links uh, that we can share in our comment thread. Do you want to talk about them? Yeah. Well, as I said, I've been all over the internet recently. And the last one I've posted there is on Sultan's house of sin YouTube channel which is um, it's owned by Harris Sultan, who styles himself the Harris Sultan. He's done my trick, you know, because when you 
when you get yourself a moniker, you can either have your name with a load of numbers on the end, or you can stick the in front of it and do it that way. Cool. So, so that's that's a a show that he put out earlier today. All right, folks, this is Harris Sultan, and you're watching Sultan's House of Sin. I get it. I get it. I get it. That's that's that that is a funny. <laughs> So here's, here's, I was prepared for it, but I always forget it. Here it is. I can hear it. I can hear it. It's going on right now. So, <laughs> okay, let me stop it. Great, great, great. So I'm glad. I'm glad you got it. I'm glad. I'm glad we can hear it, and uh, we'll definitely recommend those links at the bottom. I would say this though: we are gonna talk about something that I think can transition really well into George's questions. That our own George Brown, the sec, the second and one half, he wanted to know how can we coexist with Christians as atheists in a society that seems to be dominated by believers. And uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to start off that with something a bit controversial. I feel like uh, for the large part, we feel like we have the onus of trying to sell um, atheism or at least rational thinking to people when really we don't have to. I don't think most people who are believers use their spiritualism to guide themselves in moments of crises. I, I actually find that they have a double standard where it's if they see someone who's sick on TV, I'll pray for you. If they see someone that's sick on the road asking for food, oh, I'll pray for that guy. If they're hungry, they go to the they go to the grocery store or they make themselves <laughs> some food. Oh, that guy's sick, I'll pray for him. That person across the street's sick, I'll pray for them. I'm sick, I'm going to a doctor, I'm going to ask for acetaminophen. I'm going to hope that he prescribes me for 250 milligrams. If he does, I'm going to a do second doctor because I'm really, really freaked out right now. I need science to help me. <laughs> the only ones that I'm worried about are the anti-vaxxers. Those seem to be ones that seem to be absolutely in denial. But for the most part, I feel like most people recognize the rational approach and may, after the fact, process it as, oh, well, God gave me the doctors. Well, God gave me the medicine, so I'll use that. And I feel like if they just were to get rid of that double standard, they'd realize I actually do like rational answers more than the spiritual. John, what do you got? Well, that's typified, isn't it, by the leaders of religious countries, highly mm. religious countries, who they tell their, their congregations, their populations, their voters to believe, because that's, you know, that's what they want. They're giving them the popularity thing in I'm order hiding. to be elected. But then when they get sick, what do they do? They go to the UK or to the USA? For they treatment. helicopter out. Yep. Yeah. It's, some, I mean, of them never, some of them never come back. <laughs> it's mother Teresa, basically in a, in a nutshell right? uh, george brown you want to weigh on this oh boy i don't know where to start i mean uh, coming from a jewish background i'm an outsider right from the get-go and then being an atheist it's like i'm a double outsider no you're an insider from the get-go you never went outside that's that's the thing about you <laughs> we all got well, dragged out we finally worked our way back in you're you just made a nice little hotel where you were it was perfect okay he's he's saying that um i was raised an atheist which i was mm -hmm. but i come from a jewish background and if nothing else culturally and and so one way or the other you know uh, I'm aware that some people believe that I killed their Lord, you know? Mm -hmm. And do I have to be afraid of that person mm. or not? I, I, I don't know. Um, but it's it's become, now that I'm living in the Bible Belt, it, it it's on my mind. It's like, um, I, I, got, I, I confess I've become a little bit paranoid. Oh, wow. I never thought about it that way. But... You know, it's like I went to the senior center yesterday to pick up some meals, some, some lunches. I'm, I'm on a, a lunch program with the senior center. And so every Friday I go and pick up some frozen dinners. And in, in the bag of food was a Christian magazine. You know, in the bag of the food that you got at the center? Oh, yeah. he's got the magazine. Okay, okay. Was yeah. it yeah. well, I don't know. I th no, it's not. It's a public uh, It's a public agency, in fact. Wow. Then you need and to it, contact the Freedom From Religion Foundation. 
Mm. Ah. Sometimes I get magazines in the mail that are Christian that are like sports stuff. So it's like ways to shoot elk, buck, yeah. Christian, American yeah, flag, rifle, Christianity. Yeah. I'm like, what is this weird magazine? Throw it away. Yeah. When you well, said this, like, yeah. this was a public center, did you mean a government sponsored center or just? Um, I uh, believe it is a government sponsored okay, center. Then yes. We got a problem. That's yeah. Problem. Let's connect with Larry and 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 get them to to realize well, that there are more you, than just. I mean, the government there. one should not be in the process of selecting religions to promote. Right. And two, but the thing was not. that the it's it's a, it's it's not obvious from looking at the cover of the magazine that it's a Christian magazine. Sure. Uh, as as we get into the art. Yeah. Huh? As long as it yeah. actually was, that's a problem. Oh yeah. And I think this feeds into your point, George, like what do atheists do in a society that's dominated by spiritual believers? It's like to a point, you got to put your foot down. And my book, it's in when governments or universities included start siding with specific deities and start issuing promotion or propaganda for that when it should be either evenly handed or none at all. And you can't do it evenly. So just don't do it at all. It's guaranteed it's going to be a problem. Scott, do you have opinions on that? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's a problem if if um, when the government's promoting a religion um, in any capacity, you know, that that's just that's just a violation of church and state, I think. Hmm. So it's just a, a legal issue, but it's just so ingrained in our society that Christianity is the main religion. Right. That. They kind of count on people not really caring about it because it's so ingrained. And, and it's such a blurry idea of Christianity because John would be much more aware of, from his history, Protestants and non-Protestants, whereas in America, it's just Christian, but it's assumed Protestant. And even when you ask what kind of Christian, well, uh, Episcopal, Methodist, <laughs> Seventh-day Adventist, <laughs> uh, Lutheran, Methodist, South, Stri- South Street Baptist, North Street Baptist, First Street Northwest Baptist. Like, mm-hmm. there are, they are not, they don't all agree <laughs> with each other. And there's reasons why there's churches, literally right outside my door, there's four churches side by side by side. All side Protestant. by side by side on the same street. They don't all, all agree. Protestant, but all different. No, they're, who knows what they are? I think one of them is an LDS. So, like, it is one of those mm. things where it's important for people to realize that Christianity doesn't mean one group of people anymore. It is so substantially bifurcated that it's not, you can't say it's all one same team. They're not all cheering for the same people. What's up, George? Go for it. Well, um, yeah, it, I mean, it is so universal, especially here where I live. Um, I don't hang out at the senior center. I, I just don't feel like I have very much in common with these people. But, they, you know, like one of the things that they do is they get together and they sing. Oh. What do they sing? They sing Protestant hymns. Mm. So, you know, it's like, for me, do I want to sing Onward Christian Soldiers? Oh my God! Right, 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 right. right. Hey, John, what the up? hell are they fighting? What is the matter with these people, John? There's a senior center near me, and their favorite song is "Stair Lift to Heaven." Stair Lift. Oh God! Ah. <laughs> we get that. Hey, how about we head out on that one? That was good, Larry. Why don't you take us out for the break? Okay, uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, this again is uh, July 25th, Sunday morning. We're recording at that time. Uh, let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Founded in 2002, we're in our 19th year. ASK has over a thousand members, and we have weekly Zoom meetings during COVID, but we 
we've also started meeting in person downtown in the old city in Knoxville at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria every Tuesday evening around 5.30 to 8. So come out and join us. Uh, you can also find us online at meetup.com, knoxvilleatheist.org, or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Right. Now, Wombat, where do you want to pick up? So we were talking about the deliciousness of crunch and munch. Do you have a snack that you need to munch? Do you have a need to crunch? Then get crunch and munch. Now in crunch and munch failure is all your crunch and munch. What is crunch and munch? I think it's. I just think it's precious that uh, John Richards thought that this was an American cereal. Oh, it's <laughs> Which not. Functionally, it might as well be right at the end of the day. Oh, okay. It's even worse than cereal. You know, there's no nutritional milk associated with it. Uh, okay. It's just sugar and corn at the end of the gotcha. day. Gotcha. Uh, hey, we're talking about listener feedback questions today. Uh, one of the quick ones that I wanted to go through was one provided to us by our own, uh, where are you? Scott Kaler, who said, isn't it funny how all arguments tend to follow Godwin's law and Godwin's law was brought up in, uh, our podcast when we were talking about a puddle shaped hole just for me. And we were talking about how people twist narratives to make sure that their perspective is always the one that's on top. And anything that gets challenged with that becomes very, very, very defensive and very chaotic for them. And they tend to bring up what we refer to as Godwin's law, uh, Nazis as like a contrast to, ex to show that they're right. And Godwin's law, if anyone wasn't aware, it means that it's the uh, idea that the longer an argument goes on, the higher the likelihood that someone brings up Adolf Hitler or Nazis. Yeah. And I thought that I've got a comment for on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's likely that the more you disagree with somebody, the more likely is you're going to bring up how they uh, compare to Nazism. But with Christian nationalism, the way it is in, in uh, America today, it, mm. it's proliferating, it's wide ranging. Um, it's People throw out Godwin's law, even though it's pertinent. I mean, uh, the comment that you make in comparison you make to the Nazis and, and Christian nationalism is Correct. pertinent, and they grow out, throw out the Godwin's law just to seem to invalidate your comment when I it doesn't it. all the time invalidate it. It's not right. necessary. You know, the way how I see it is uh, a lot of people make arguments that use tired, uh, fall fallacious formats, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the argument's fallacious. So it's right. the same way when someone uses an argument for authority. It's mm -hmm. like, if you are actually citing a, a, an author authority on a particular topic, and you say, this guy said this, or this lady said that, and she would know because she's there or she studied it. Yeah. That's a good criterion. Even if someone says, well, that's just an argument for authority. You're just saying it's true because that person said it's true. It's like, yeah, but well, that person knows there's... it's true. There's a difference between an argument from authority and an argument from expertise. Uh, an authority figure uh, claims to be able to make a judgment on something uh, just from his authority, mm. not necessarily. I mean, like a president making a, a decision call on something he knows nothing about. That I hear would be you. an authoritative you. thing. But I agree. an expertise is like going to a geneticist to talk about medicine. Right. You know, the, he does have the expertise and, and the wherewithal to make good decisions on that. And in my opinion, getting, I was just saying ahead. expertise is authority on the subject. That's what I meant. Right. But I totally right. mean what you mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Larry, what were but, you uh, I was just going to make a point that uh, Nazism was actually Christian nationalism hmm. in, in Germany at the time hmm. because it was a Christian movement. Hitler himself said it was a Christian movement. Hmm. So we need to be very aware of the Christian nationalism that's going on here in America. And I, and I wanted to just throw out, it's also typically brought up as a argument for morality or an argument to appeal to emotions when someone brings uh -huh. up Nazis, because we tend to tend to agree that Nazis are bad. So if I can pull up Nazis, then now I have this really good contrast. That's the worst thing that we all agree on that makes my idea not right. look nearly as bad. And now we can all switch to mitten chip ice cream because it's the best ice cream, right? Or else you're a Nazi, right? Like we all agree, mitten chip is <laughs> the best one, right? That's how those arguments tend to like slide. Anyway. I did not see that coming. 
<laughs> uh, here's one last one. Dada's Trading Room brought up the idea that um, he is particularly irked when people bring up that Sweden is an atheistic country. Uh, he looked up some data and he found some percentages and actually found some more atheistic countries like the Czech Republic or even China. Uh, mm. I have no problem with data. I love data. I think the point with that I was saying is uh, I, I lived in a, one of the biggest cities in Sweden, Gothenburg. There's like there's some big cities, but there's only 9 million people in Sweden. And so living in the big city next to a campus, working as a scientist, I was most likely surrounded by just, you know, out and out atheists. Whereas the much rural areas where there are fewer people, but more spread out, probably very religious. So that makes sense. But in the area that I was exposed to when I lived there for about a year and a half, mostly atheists. Also, I don't mind that there are Christians in Sweden. What I wanted to call out was the idea that Isaiah, who we were speaking to, was very quick to jump on statistical data to purport that Sweden is not as atheistic as it seemed, whereas when it came to his end of one experiment of him talking to a god, he was like willing to believe it regardless of whatever it was saying and realizing that he didn't necessarily have a good criteria to know for a fact that that voice was Jesus. Like he seemed to be like, I will take this face value for Jesus voice in my head. And for anyone else making any weird statistical in this information, I will quickly shut that down with a stockpile of data. And I just wish he had that same standard of evidence for everything. That was the main takeaway. Anyway, we're going to lead up to our own George Brown for our last question of the day. George, do you want to summarize what you were asking us? Well, I asked the question, are we all sheep in the religions of Facebook and Google? Now, you're going to have to elaborate on that, my friend. What do you mean by that? Okay. Um, what I've found, these are proprietary platforms. These are private businesses that have, in effect, become languages of their own, uh, virtually governments of their own. We are all members of, of these organizations. I'm not, by the way. Uh, I, I confess that I'm, I'm a hypocrite because there is one Google service that I do use, and that is uh, YouTube. So okay. I'm guilty. Okay. However, however, in order to participate in this society, in, in a way, it's like I must be a member of Facebook. I must agree to have Facebook tracking me throughout my life, and I refuse to do that. Mm. So, uh, and I pay a big price for that because if, um, if I want to be notified, for instance, about what's happening in this meeting right here, I have to be a Facebook member because the communication is done exclusively through Messenger, which is a Facebook product, and I have to be a member of Facebook in order to use it. And the alternative um, would be Google, Google Mail, which is like uh, Google. Also right? a surveillance yeah. engine, yeah. you know, and, and so I found, I found alternatives for everything that, that Google offers except for um, YouTube, which is vital for what I'm going through in my life right now. Um, there's no way I can avoid it. Facebook. If I want to go to a yard sale, it's Facebook or nothing. So I feel a dilemma in my own life. You know, there's a well, Sufi teaching story about this, but I'm not going to get into that right now. <laughs> it's so like, who, sounds who's like the, the holdout? George who's the holdout? Something has yeah. become so culturally popular that you can't escape it. And at the same time, it's also in the same way how God is tracking your, 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 your deeds, if you can say <laughs> it. so is yeah. Google and Facebook for their own profit in the same way that most religions do so for their profit, or at least claim to, but still make a very good profit anyway. Uh, good. John Richards, do you feel like we can classify Google and Facebook as a religion? And uh, are you subject to their, their teachings? Oh, well, I'm sorry, but yes, I'm, I'm a, a victim of both of those organizations. But the, the thing is, the difference between them and God is their surveillance works, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like CCTV cameras, they're real, mm. and God looking down on us and keeping our morals pure isn't. Mm. <laughs> so in, in I... that respect, it's worse to be surveillance. So it's at least effective and 
observable and testable. I can tell you this. I am, if you want to, you can go to Google's AdSense page, which is Google's profile of who it thinks you are and it, how it targets its ads towards you. And it's literally a 50 page bunch of icons that says, we think you're a 34 year old male. We think you live in this part of the country. We think you're right-handed. We think you like this. Do you think these are your favorite bands? And you can say yes or no and, and to, to fine tune your ad preferences, but it starts off with a pretty good profile of who it thinks you are, just based on how long you are hovering over links, when you are clicking what you are clicking, what you chose to look at, what you chose not to look at, how long you've watched YouTube videos and how you fit into each of the demographics. Google has found out things about me that I hadn't realized that I knew about myself. And really? it'll be like, wow. yeah, it's just like, this guy's going to like disc golf videos. And I'm like, I'm not going to like disc golf. That's the dumbest thing. Next thing you know, I'm watching four, five hour long disc golf videos. I'm buying the discs. I'm like, Google, you, you found it out about me. I don't know how you figured this out, but this is great. This They're is predictive. Yeah. So it says I like hockey. But, so some says it's a little But loud. who are they? Who are they selling that information to? Adverts, most likely, most likely Innova. <laughs> oh, anyway, yeah. anyway, anyway, but yeah, John, what's up? John, what's up? The funny thing is sometimes they offer you an opportunity to reject an ad. Mm. And if you, if you do that, they come back with a question, what was wrong with it? Yeah. <laughs> and the options that, that, that they offer do not include it's an ad. <laughs> <laughs> That's it what's wrong with it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scott, have you well, ever? Oh, go for it, George. Um, there, there. Is, I, I've recently heard a saying, which I think is really true. Um, if you are not paying on the internet, you are the product that's being offered for sale. Hmm. And um, in other words, uh, having worked in the software industry myself, it's very obvious that it costs a tremendous amount of money to provide these free services that are so seductive to us that we automatically get sucked in as if they're a religion. John, let me throw this out at you. Are you saying then that Google and Facebook are not a religion by virtue of the fact that they are effective at what they do? No, no, I'm saying that they're not a religion because they're not an ideology. Mm. It's, a, it's the same as people who say that atheism is a religion. It's not. Mm, it's right, not an right. ideology. There are no values and principles associated mm -hmm. with it. No. <laughs> you know, it, it, there is a really good point to it. It is up to the market. And so I would say, and we're going to, to Scott, is as soon as a better product comes on the market that does better what Google does or does better than what Facebook does, people will gravitate to that and that'll be the next big thing. Similar to how it was with Yahoo or, or MySpace or Friendster, if you guys remember those, the next one that does it better, that's one we're gonna go to. Scott, what do you think? Yeah, I think in that case, from just tell, um, um, dovetailing off what you just said there, um, in a way it does have ideals, it has an agenda hmm. and then it, bases its ideals around what's consistent with its agenda. So, for example, like a few weeks ago, um, I was watching uh, two guys, you know, kind of debate about this very subject, right? And I think one guy was more of a liberal progressive person. And his point was that, you know, yeah, they're, you know, they're kind of, um, you know, basing all this stuff on advertising and what makes you money. But the good thing is that at least now we have somebody that can kind of control the language, you know, that, you know, we can be politically correct in our language. And if not, they'll ban you from their platform. And that's a good thing because then when you control people's speech, you kind of control the way they think, and then you can get them to kind of think correctly instead yeah. of incorrectly. Hmm. And well, so, modify, yeah. The, yeah, and so the opponent, of course, was saying, well, that's not a good thing at all, because we don't want big corporation telling us how to think. Right. And so that's the, the real debate right there. It's like, these guys have an ideology, they want you to think a certain way, speak a certain way, because that's what makes it money. They don't make a lot of money. Um, if people get to say what they want because then it offends most of their, you know, uh, people that support them. So it's a, it's a big, it's a big, um, controversy on that end of it. 
what about the uh, political powers that we offer? Um, I want to get Larry's feedback and then we can go to John. Uh, Larry, do you think uh, Google and Facebook may have too much political swing? I know a lot of religious groups do. Uh, do you well, feel like this is with them? I, I think that they uh, do. However, I'm not sure that they have much of their own innate uh, political stance um, to push. What oh, the problem is that once you use them, uh, the, you, you, you set up your own filters, apparently. Uh, you like this and you don't like that. They show you more of this and less of that. Mm. So you end up in a Google or Facebook bubble that reinforces your preconceived notions mm. and your personal validations. Uh, it, basically, the religion that, that you uh, adhere to when you use those services are the ones of your own making. Yep. <laughs> That's you know, a good point. That that's the main problem, but uh, I don't I think it. that either one uh, tend to do much on the way of limiting free speech. Uh, it's just that uh, we go where we hear the speech we want to hear. Right, right, right. And mm -hmm. the internet's a big place. John Richards, what what's your feed in? Well, I'm glad you think that uh, we need a new social media platform because the current ones are. Uh, unsatisfactory in some way or other. Yeah. Uh, because commercial warning, I'm starting one. Oh, listen. It's called, Talk to me. I'm listening. It's called Free Thought City. It's not live at the moment, but the crowdfunding campaign launches on August the 7th. Very, very cool. And what very will good. make it better compared to what we already got? Okay, good question. Well, for a start, you won't be able to access it until you have flashed your charge card. <laughs> we're only going to take... Well, the point about this... The point about this is we're only going to take $1 of it at the basic le level, and that's $1 a year. So we're not interested in the money side of it at that stage. What we're interested in is getting your contact details, because once we've got those in a secure file, you know, according to the, the protection of data laws and so on, once we've got those, we, we, we have no anonymity. We will not permit people to join our social media site anonymously and we have no multiple identity because oh, our good. software will spot anyone who tries to sign up with some of the same criteria as we've already got on our, our puppet register. accounts. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. I like that. So you're you're trying to eliminate trolls, if I hear you right. Not only that, no, because on sign up, on becoming a citizen, having gone through the the gateway of registration, people will be given a number of stars, social behavior star rating. Oh man, this is all my red flags. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if they violate any of the criteria, the rules of the, the show, they will lose stars. And they, oh, they'll be can, they'll can I buy like indulgence? <laughs> can I buy indulgences from you? Yeah. Could I buy multiple? Could I have cred multiple yeah. credit cards that I could buy? I'm down to one star. Can I buy five more, four yeah, more stars? Yeah. No, no, just yeah, guys. It's a it's a great plan for six more dollars. You can get six stars, <laughs> and then you can quote as much as you want. Sounds sounds like it's going to be an interesting ride. Yeah. and I think yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll we'll from it. I'll join. I'll join. Hey, so. George, you got George on. That's that was on. <laughs> Listen, guys. That's one, I, I do, in, in terms of like social groups, um, George, you might enjoy the idea that a lot of people share your same sentiments with the idea of Google and Facebook being a bit too nosy and doing unknown things that are uncomfortable with your data and then also known things that are just like outright. No, I didn't sign up for that. So there's browsers that are available to you that are Indeed. made by the people who, who, who are actively trying to give freedom back to the end user. One that I would recommend that I'm using right now is called Brave Browser. It's Brave. The, here's two things that I like about it. One, everything is no ads. It, it natively blocks all ads. So like no YouTube ads, no pop-up ads, no nothing like that. There aren't any ads, period. But 
you can click a button to toggle on ads. And if you do it, every single time you get an ad, you get paid money. They give you a little bit of cryptocurrency that goes into a wallet that's not tied to any of your wow. personal information. And they basically say, anytime you want to cash out this money, you can. It's We are allowing the advertisers basically to pay you to show you ads. And so... <laughs> You get maybe about 30 cents a day with enough internet use. That's not a lot, but it's more than I was getting with Google and then kind of stacks up. I don't, I don't, I just have my, I'd rather not have ads, but Brave Bowser is very good with that. And the second thing is they don't track your information. It's really, really nice. George Brown, what do you got? I also want to mention that if any of you are geekly or, uh, oriented, mm. uh, you can get off the train completely or mostly by switching your operating system to one or another version of Linux, right. which is what I'm coming at you with right this moment. I like Ubuntu. And, um, what's that? I like you Ubuntu. like Ubuntu? I, I'm, I'm using a variant of Ubuntu, which is called Mint. Yep. And the reason why I use it is because it is the most commonly used version of Linux and therefore the most widely supported by its members. That's great. It, although I have to caution you, I said geekly oriented because... Um, it is a Wild West show. It, it's it's technically very complex and was yeah. hard for me to learn and still hard for me to learn. And I am good with computers. Yeah, so. Ubuntu is not as popular as Mint, but it's a lot easier to use. It basically looks like a phone. Scott, what do you have? I was just going to ask him, you know, how are you going to get likes if you're not on any of these platforms? And, <laughs> you know, that's going to well, you guys your like life, me. right? You guys love me, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I also you get a thumbs that. up. Yes. <laughs> Get a heart. Speaking, of things, speaking of things that we like, I do like bunches and I do like to punch things, but I also love Crunch and Munch. This show was brought to you by Crunch and Munch. The one true no, Crunch and Munch. If you got a crunch, if you got a munch, Crunch and Munch we supports all advertise. of our political views, all of our political opinions. You can find them right here at crunchandmunch.com. Get your Crunch and Munch at your Crunch and Munch distributor. Previously George. was a comedy routine. We do not advertise. <laughs> On this George Brown, <laughs> what would you recommend we check out before next week? Well, check out Linux. I okay. mean, if you're geekly oriented, you, you see, I keep saying geekly oriented because uh, it's a Wild West show. It's democracy in action. And yep. because of that, it's pandemonium. It's just completely, um, I said a Wild West show, I, I guess. Um, the, it, Mussolini ran, make the trains run on time. This is the opposite. <laughs> what I do like about Linux is you can put it all on one flash drive, plug it into your you computer, can. and yeah. sideload it as a separate OS from a USB stick. So you don't even have to really install it on your computer. You can sideload it and run an entire operating system off a drive that stays consistent based on wherever that USB is connected to. Very, very, very powerful stuff. I'd highly recommend you check it out. John Richards, what do you recommend we check out before next week? Well, I've got uh, three addresses. One is Free Thought Productions, which is my channel on YouTube. Then there is um, the Harris Sultan's site, which is called Sultan's House of Sin. And then there is Atheism UK. And uh, all of those are good sites to get to see for atheists. Nice. And then future down the road in October, you got Free Thought Central, right? Free Thought City. Free which Thought City which launches on August the 7th, not October, August the 7th. Mm, August the 7th. Oh, that's coming up then. That's coming up like next week, two weeks from now. Nice. Yeah. L Scott, what's something that you would recommend that we check out before next week, my friend? Oh, man. Um, I would check out uh, dubshine.bandcamp.com. Sure, why not? Why not? Shameless why not? plug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good music on there. So, yeah, absolutely. Check it Thank out. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And uh, you can find me. Let's chat. Uh, I post these videos once a week. I'm probably doing some more ASL vids. I'm feeling more in the mood to uh, take some of the rust off my sign language. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Larry, 
So apparently Crunch Munch has taken away our sponsorship. They, I just got a little notice. So I apologize about the Crunch Munch things. They are no longer supportive of the show. I can tell you my honest feelings that I don't like them anymore. I'm not, I've never, I completely disregard all of Crunch Munch. I, I, I condemn them and I don't want anything else to do with them for the rest of the show. But I still have the lingering question of what is atheism and what it's all about. Can you help me out with that? Oh, yes, I have a book called Atheism. Atheism, what's it all about? Oh, wow, that's perfect. Yeah, how about that? What a coincidence. And it's available on Amazon. So uh, if you don't know about atheism, want to know about it, check it out. My own content is uh, found online at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click the blog button for radio show archives, uh, atheist songs, and articles on the subject. Uh, you can find my YouTube channel by searching for Doubter5 or Larry Rhodes. If you have any questions for the show, send them by email to askanatheist at knoxfullatheist.org. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, and some people definitely do, you can find help at recoveringfromreligion.org. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember that everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and so are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we will see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. in my head that told me atheism is true. <laughs> <laughs>